In this video, I'm going to cover resonance structures. So when there's more than one Lewis structure for a molecule, and the only thing that's different about the Lewis structures is the position of the electrons, then those structures are called resonance structures. So the actual molecule is a combination of these resonance structures. Uh, it's not, it doesn't alternate back and forth. It's not one or the other. It's actually both. And the problem is that Lewis structures um, are an inadequate tool, an inadequate representation to show us what the molecule really looks like. So in cases where it's unclear where we fill in all of the electrons, and there's more than one way that we could do it that are equal, then in fact um, both of those ways happen. And it's hard to, uh, to show that with Lewis structures unless we draw two different structures, or more, different, more than two sometimes. So it's important to note that the molecule does not resonate between the two forms, even though it's called resonance. Um, the, the molecule doesn't switch from this form to this form and back and forth like this. Um, it's always some combination of the two. We're just, we can't draw it that way um, in, one, in one picture. We have to draw more than one picture. So when we fill in the electrons on, for example, this molecule SO2, we have an S in the middle because S is closest to the center of the periodic table, so it's the central atom. And nature loves symmetry, so it wants to put the O's symmetric to the S. But when we're filling in the electrons, we have to ask, well, there's going to be one double bond, an SO double bond, and there's going to be one SO single bond. But is the double bond the one on the left, or is the double bond the one on the right? So when we're drawing this, this Lewis structure, Somebody, one student might draw this version, and one student might draw this version. Well, who's right? Well, it turns out they're, they're both right, and neither of them is right, because it, the molecule doesn't just look like this, and the molecule doesn't just look like this. If I were to draw this or this, that's actually incorrect. The only way to accurately draw and accurately represent a molecule that has resonance is to draw all of the resonance structures together and draw the complete resonance set. And that's how we would represent that molecule correctly in, uh, when we're drawing Lewis structures. So how, do we, how can we identify when this situation is going to happen, when there's more than one picture and they're almost identical, it's just the only difference is where the double bond is? Well, that's really the key, is by finding the double bond. Because resonance structures are only different based on where the electrons are. And uh, the, electro the only electrons that can move are those that are in, uh, are in lone pairs or electrons that are in double bonds. The electrons that are in a single bond are not going to move. If the electrons in a single bond move, then that bond will break. The electrons in a single bond have to stay where they are so that S and O stay stuck together. So let's look at some examples. Here is a molecule with a nitrogen atom in the middle and three oxygen atoms. We'll see that a lot, a lot of the time, especially here in this class, the structures that we'll see that have resonance are structures that have bonds to oxygen. And so sometimes bonds to oxygen can be single bonds and sometimes bonds to oxygen are double bonds. When a bond is a single bond to oxygen, notice that it has three lone pairs because we always have to meet the octet rule. Two, four, six, eight. So this oxygen has eight electrons. It has one single bond and one, two, three lone pairs. Over here, this oxygen has a uh, two, four, six, eight. So this oxygen has eight electrons also. It hasn't, neither of them have broken the octet rule. Uh, but this oxygen has one, two bonds, and one, two lone pairs. So there are different ways to get to eight, right? Two lone pairs and two bonds, that's eight. Three lone pairs and one bond, that's eight. Nitrogen here in the middle, one, two, three, four bonds, that's eight. So all of these are just different ways that, that we can satisfy the octet rule and get to eight electrons for these atoms. But look at when I draw this molecule, I have one nitrogen-oxygen double bond, and I have two nitrogen-oxygen single bonds. 
So when I'm drawing it, how do I know where the double bond goes? Does it go here to this oxygen? Or does it go here to this oxygen? Or does it go here to this oxygen? Well, you might be saying it seems kind of like it doesn't really matter because they're all identical, right? So does it go to the left or does it go to the right? Well, are these really so different? I can just take this one and flip it around and then it looks exactly like this one, right? The difference is if I were to draw just this structure on top and say this molecule always looks like this. It always has a double bond here and two single bonds here. If that were the case, then when I was looking at this molecule and I measured this bond length, a double bond is always shorter than a single bond. So I'd measure the bond lengths in this molecule and I would get this one would be short and this one and this one would be long. I'd have one short and two long. But when I actually measure the bond lengths in a molecule like this or any molecule that has resonance, there is not one short and two long. All of the bonds that participate in resonance are exactly the same length. So this isn't a double bond and two single bonds because this is also a valid resonance structure where I have a double bond here and this is a single bond. So is this a double bond or is it a single bond? Well if both of these structures are valid then this bond right here is both. It's a double bond and it's a single bond. So what does that mean? Well, it's kind of halfway in between. It's kind of halfway between a double and a single. It's a one and a half bond. This one right here, it's a single bond, but it's also a double bond because here's a resonance structure where it's a double bond. So what is this bond? Is it double or single? Well, it's kind of halfway in between. It's a one and a half bond, not a one bond or a two bond, a one and a half bond. What about this one on top? Well, we didn't draw the last resonance structure in here, but we could because this nitrogen here is exactly the same, excuse me, the oxygen is the same as the oxygens on the other one. It's N, O, and now these are single bonds, O. I have a minus charge here, a minus charge here. So this is also a valid resonance structure where I have a, a double bond to oxygen. We can fill in all of the lone pairs here. Two lone pairs on this one. One, two, three lone pairs here just so we can complete these octets. And this is valid a valid resonance structure too. I have one, two, three oxygens. This oxygen could be double. This oxygen could be double. Or this oxygen could be double. So that means I have three resonance structures. I have to draw all three versions of this molecule, one where this one's a double, one where this bond is a double, and one where this bond is a double. Only then have I drawn the complete, resonant, the complete set of resonance structures, and then I have represented this molecule correctly. Oops. So here is uh, another, another example of a resonance structure. Um, we have S in the middle here. S has two, four, six, eight electrons. O here has two, four, six, eight. This O has two, four, six, eight. This O has two, four, six, eight. This O has eight. These H's have two. So when I uh, draw the electrons like this on this molecule, and I calculate the formal charge for S, remember formal charge, formal charge equals valence electrons minus balls plus sticks. So S, the number of valence electrons is six, if we find it on the periodic table. The balls and sticks, one, two, three, four balls. Six minus four is plus two. So this sulfur has a plus two charge. 
If we calculate the formal charge for oxygen, it has six valence electrons, just like sulfur, they're in the same column. And it has one, two, three, four, five, six balls and one stick. So six minus seven equals negative one. So this O has a negative one charge. This O is the same, it has a negative one charge. So here are some um, charges that I've drawn on, some formal charges on this molecule. So when um, we have situation like this, this is a valid structure for this molecule, but it's also true that if I have electrons up here in a lone pair, and this atom has a negative charge, what a negative charge means is that this atom has extra electrons. Electrons are negative, so if this atom is negative, it has extra electrons. This atom is positive. That means this atom has too few electrons. We say it's electron deficient. So if this atom has too few electrons, two of them, two, too few electrons, and this atom has one extra electron, then what if this atom shares? And it gives one of its electrons to sulfur. And same thing down here. This atom has one extra electron, minus one, an extra one extra minus charge. This sulfur is missing two electrons. So what if it gets shares one from this oxygen and the sulfur shares one from this oxygen? Then it would look like this. This lone pair would turn into a double bond like this. And instead of those two electrons being stuck on oxygen, now those two electrons are down here in, in a bond. So they look down here. And this one, these two electrons, instead of being in a lone pair, stuck on this oxygen, giving it a negative charge, now these two electrons can move and become a double bond between S and O, just like it is down here. And what this does is it removes all of the formal charges from this compound. Now if I calculate the formal charge of S, how many valence electrons does it start with? Six. How many balls and sticks does it have? One, two, three, four, five, six. So six minus six. That means this sulfur it does not have a formal charge, zero. It has just as many electrons as it wants. This oxygen has six valence electrons, all oxygens do. They bring six valence electrons to the molecule, and it has one, two, three, four, five, six balls and sticks. Six minus six, zero. Six minus six, zero. So this is a valid resonance structure for this molecule because the octet rule is met. All atoms have an octet. Um, and uh, all, it has the right amount of electrons, and all atoms have bonds to them. And all atoms are bonded in the right way. The S is in the middle, the H's are on the end. So this is a valid resonance structure for this molecule. But this one down here is actually even better because if I can draw a resonance structure where it doesn't have any pluses and minuses and all of the formal charges are zero, then that's the most stable form of that molecule. This does represent the molecule to some extent. This is a valid representation, but this is a better representation because the formal charges are all zero. So what you might notice about this though is that if the octet rule is met here, two, four, six, eight, then the octet rule is broken here, two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. Right here, S has twelve electrons around it. Well, the octet rule is not a very good rule because it does not apply to very many atoms. So let's look at the periodic table here. The only atoms that are stuck at eight, that, that can only have eight and can't have any more, are carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, and neon. And neon doesn't really matter because being a noble gas, it's not gonna ever make bonds. We'll never draw it in a molecule. So we don't have to worry about the octet rule for neon. So it's really just C, N, O, F. Those are the only four elements on the periodic table that must have eight electrons, that can't have fewer than eight and can't have more than eight. They have to have eight. Just these four atoms. Boron usually has six electrons when it's in a neutral compound. Beryllium usually has four electrons when it's in a neutral compound. Silicon, phosphorus, sulfur, chlorine, these can all have more than eight, 10, 12, 
sometimes as many as 18 electrons. So um, the octet rule really only applies hard and fast to this element C, N, O, and F. Any element that comes after those, after atomic number 9, can have more than 8 electrons. And those that come before atomic number 6, those can have fewer than 8 electrons. So the octet rule is not a great rule. It doesn't apply to everything. And in fact, it only applies to a very few elements. The reason that we use the octet rule is because carbon is a very important element. So even though there's only four elements that, you, that really utilize the octet rule, carbon is arguably the most important one. So it's OK for us to accommodate carbon. So again, better structures have fewer formal charges. If you can draw a structure where all of the atoms are neutral and none of them have a formal charge, that's the best resonance structure. Better structures have smaller formal charges. If you have to have a formal charge, it's better if it's small. OK, let's look at this example down here. So I've just drawn two resonance structures in a set. This is not the complete set. There's one more. But in this set of resonance structures, we can see that this nitrogen atom has a formal charge of minus 1, this nitrogen atom has a formal charge of plus 1, and this nitrogen atom has a formal charge of minus 1. I can move the electrons. In fact, the way that I move them is this. These electrons come over here and turn into a triple bond. And then these electrons over here from the double bond move over here to become a lone pair. So you can see this elect these electrons became a triple bond. So now I have a triple bond and only one lone pair. And right here, these electrons in the double bond became a lone pair. So now it's a single bond. And instead of having two lone pairs on this end, now I have one, two, three lone pairs on this end. So the double bond became a lone pair. So what that does is you can see effectively the electrons are moving from over here. They're moving this way. That's what the arrows are telling us. So electrons are negative. As the arrows are moving this way, the electrons are moving this way. I'm moving negative charge onto this atom. So now this ni nitrogen atom has a minus 2 charge instead of a minus 1 charge. So which of these resonance structures is better? We would say this one is major, and this one is minor. And the reason is because overall, um, I still have uh, ad two atoms, or I guess on this one, I have three atoms with a formal charge. and this one, I have two atoms with a formal charge. But the overall charge is the same. I have two minus charges. They just happen to both be on the same atom here. And over here, I have two minus charges, and one plus and one plus. So the amount of charge between these is the same. But in this case, both of those charges are stuck on one atom. Whenever I have a, a negative or a plus, a, a negative charge or a plus charge on an um, atom, it is, un, more, it is less stable than an atom that's neutral. So having a charge is destabilizes an atom. It's better to be neutral than it is to be charged. Having a negative 2 or a positive 2 charge is even worse. Negative 1 and positive 1 is bad enough. Negative 2 and positive 2, that makes an atom really unstable. Negative 3 and positive 3, that makes it incredibly unstable. So neutral atoms are the most stable. And then positive 1 and positive 2 is less stable. And uh, excuse me, negative 1 and positive 1. And when I, by the time I start to get charges that are 2 or greater, they're very unstable. So we would say that's a very minor resonance contributor. And this is a major contributor. This, this resonance contributor is more stable than this. Now, during the course of this discussion, you, it's easy to slip back into the idea that this molecule is changing. It goes from here to here to here to here. And this is what resonance means. Resonance means that sometimes it looks like this, and sometimes it looks like this. That's not true. That is not what resonance means. Resonance means it looks like this, and it looks like this all the time. It always looks like both. But I can't draw a, an adequate picture that shows that. So this isn't really a negative 2 charge. 
and it isn't really a negative one charge. It's some blend of both of these. The real, the real situation is somewhere in the middle of both of these, but I can't adequately draw it with this representation. So um, Lewis structures really are just a failing of this system. It's drawing resonance structures is a silly way to try to represent an atom or a molecule because the molecule doesn't look this way and this way and this way and have four different pictures. The molecule only has one picture when you look at it, it looks one way. It has a certain number of charge. The bonds are a certain length. They don't change, they don't go back and forth. So this is just a really a bad representation of a molecule. That's really what a resonance structure is. It's an inadequate way to represent molecules. A better way to represent this molecule would be to draw the framework of the atoms. And then when we're trying to say where are the electrons, since they, they're not strictly in a double bond or a triple bond, we could kind of, we kind of do something like this, where we draw dotted lines here. Instead of a full bond, we kind of draw a dotted line. And we can kind of draw this and say the, the negative, this whole structure has a negative charge and these are kind of single and kind of double and kind of single and kind of double and the electrons are kind of spread around. So this is called a resonance hybrid. An, a resonance hybrid is where I, we take all of the resonance structures and cram them all together to try, try to make one picture because of course the molecule really only looks one way when you look at it. So this is an attempt in Lewis with Lewis structures to try to cram all those resonance structures together to make one picture. But even this isn't really great. A res even a resonance hybrid is not really a great representation of a molecule that has resonance, that, that is ambiguous where the electrons go. So we'll look at some other ways to represent where electrons go um, in the next chapter that are a little bit better than Lewis structures.